I wish I had a bigger smash. Why can I never time my smash? How do I create more power in my smash? Do you ever feel like that's you? Well, in this video, our most highly requested video, we're going to break down everything you need to know about the smash, including the technique and lots of tips to improve your power and timing. And the reason we've waited so long to release this video is that we wanted to really understand where you guys go wrong in your smashes and also get to grips of what really creates a powerful smash. And we've definitely done that with lots of research. It's going to be a good one, so let's get to it. The smash is the one shot that everyone wants to be the best at, but that doesn't mean you should use it all the time. If your opponent's lifted right onto the back line or you're out of position and off balance, it's probably the wrong shot choice. And using it could get you or your partner into trouble and make you lose the rally. As you can see Praveen Jordan doing here, you should use a variety of shots, waiting until the right opportunity on a shorter lift to use your smash. And just a quick note that this week's video is looking at how to improve your smash technique and power. Next week's video is on the jump smash, so smash the subscribe button if you want to see that. Okay, back to the video. First things first, we need to break down the preparation and every aspect of the preparation is done to enable us to have a fast racket head speed as this is the ultimate goal when trying to create a powerful smash. So where should you position yourself for the smash? Well, you need to make sure you're behind the shuttle when hitting it, approximately half a meter behind. This is because a lot of power comes from rotating your body forwards into the shot. And if you take the shuttle slightly behind you, then your momentum won't be going forwards, which reduces your power but more on this later. This is why you need to be in a good position on the court to play a smash. And this, as well as a lot of the information in this video, has come from several studies done by Loughborough University looking at the smash, and we've both been participants in this. We'll reference this research throughout the video as there's a lot of interesting findings, and we'll also include a link in the description below to the research paper. Being behind the shuttle is important for whatever type of footwork you're doing, whether it's a scissor kick smash, a jump out, or a jump smash. Next, in your preparation, you want your body to be facing sidewards with your racket arm around a 90 degree angle like this, with your non-racket arm pointing up like this to help with your timing, balance and your rotation. If you're really tucked up like this, then this will really hurt your rotation and you'll lose a lot of power in your smash. You should have a similar preparation for your drop and clear to make it deceptive. If you missed our drop shot tutorial last week, we'd recommend checking that out after this. So in this position, and we found that you can add in a stick like this to help you get it right. Finally, for your grip, you should be in a forehand grip, but if you find you slice the shuttle a lot in your smash, move your grip round very slightly to a panhandle grip to hit it with a more flat face. You want to have your racket loose in your hand until the last second to create that extra speed in the racket. And finally, you need to have your hand low down the grip to create a longer lever. So you're in the right position, what's next? Well, the next steps are all about the rotation of the hips, torso, and shoulders. And these major muscle groups work together to give you the ability to have that fast racket head speed and forwards momentum. So you generate energy in the legs, rotate your hips, then upper torso, then your shoulders and elbow come through, as well as the smaller parts of your body, like your forearm and wrist. And it's important to note that although these movements happen in a sequence, you should do them very quickly after one another to create the flow and perfect your timing for the shot but we'll go into that more throughout the rest of the video. Rotation is a common theme throughout this video that a lot of people underestimate the importance of. In fact, it's probably the biggest differentiator between an intermediate player and an advanced player. And a lot of this rotation comes from your trunk or core. So you need to develop the ability to rotate your trunk quickly. Your core actually slows down before you hit the shot, as do other parts of your rotation. And this deceleration of certain body parts is important to note. If you don't slow anything down, you'll look a bit like this. You'll lose control of the shot and not be able to create any real force. So as you're rotating your torso, it's important to keep the elbow back and delay this forward movement of your upper arm. This action stretches the chest, which means that the final movement that pulls the elbow forwards is more powerful and the elbow comes through faster as a result. So after the elbow comes through with the shoulder rotation, it then quickly slows down, allowing the forearm and wrist to come through to hit the shot. It's a similar philosophy in a way to a tennis serve or most throwing actions. So you start in the legs, hips rotate, you rotate your upper torso, shoulder, then forearm and wrist come through. And then you hit or throw just before you straighten the arm. 
However, unlike throwing, we have a racket, and this racket is a lot lighter than a tennis racket, which is why we can create a lot more force, and why badminton is the fastest racket sport in the world. And no, it's not just the wrist that creates the power, which many people think, it's all of these things combined. And crucially, it's about generating this fast swing right at the last second, as if you start the swing too early, then you lose your speed and therefore your power. <sighs> there's been a lot of information there, but there's still so much more you need to know. Yeah, there are several points we still need to consider, plus some common mistakes that we often see people make. It's a complex skill, which is why so many people, including ourselves, often find it very difficult. But we're trying to make it as simple as possible for you. Firstly, many people talk about forearm rotation, but this is a bit of a myth, as the forearm isn't a joint like the elbow or shoulder. If you put your arm straight out like this, then you can rotate your forearm in two different ways. Like this, with just the bottom half of your arm rotating, or like this, which is the rotation we need for the smash. And this forearm rotation is actually caused by this internal shoulder rotation and not simply the forearm rotating. And this movement is not proven to create additional power, but it does help you get your elbow in the right position to create this internal rotation and therefore faster racket head speed and faster smash. Now, it also helps you stop slicing the shuttle, which is where we see a lot of people go wrong as if you slice the shuttle in your smash, you lose your power severely. Following on from what we said earlier in the preparation phase, you need to be behind the shuttle at the point of contact. And this contact point helps you to produce a good angle on your smash. Now, it goes without saying, if you're taller, you can create a better angle on your smash, and you do also have an advantage in terms of creating power with your long levers. Those with shorter limbs do have a slight disadvantage in terms of their ability to rotate and generate racket head speed and they also won't be able to make contact with the shuttle as in front of them as the shuttle would unfortunately go into the net. That's not to say smaller players can't still have a powerful smash though. So you want to hit the shuttle in front of you and not with your arm completely straight at the point of contact. And you also want to strike the shuttle around here on your strings. The study at Loughborough University found that the optimal point is around two centimeters above the center of the strings and one centimeter towards the inside like we're showing on this graphic. We were actually really surprised it was slightly off center, but this is because of the hitting action and timing. This, however, is really hard to practice. We just thought it might be cool for you guys to know. Another point that we just need to get in is that the smash isn't all about power. Placement is really important and can often be overlooked. But yeah, back to how to hit with power. As we've said throughout the video, the main aspect of a powerful smash is to have a very quick racket head speed and staying relaxed until the last second will help with this. A lot of top players such as Praveen Jordan are so relaxed and loose in their grip that these three fingers are barely touching the racket until the last second, forcing themselves to stay relaxed and not grip the racket too tight. And then they put the fingers on just before they strike the shuttle to generate even more speed. As we've said, a big differentiator between those that have a really powerful smash and those that don't is this rotation and in specific, the rotation of the upper torso. So basically, I'm putting all 75 kilograms of my body weight into my smash, and not just the weight of my arm, which weighs a lot less. And this is where a lot of people go wrong, by not rotating, rotating too early, or falling out of the side and only using their arm to create the power as a result. And this can actually cause many people to have shoulder injuries when they smash a lot in this way. Now, do you need a big, muscly arm to have a powerful smash? No, muscles are good, but you definitely don't need a big arm, and that's a common misconception. As we said throughout, it's all about your racket speed. If you actually study the majority of big smashers, they have quite light arms. They're strong, but their skinnier arms enable them to have quicker racket speed, and that is the ultimate goal. Just think about how fast a light Formula One car can travel versus a big lorry. And yes, in terms of muscles, strengthening the back of your shoulder is actually just as important as it really helps you with the deceleration phase of the smash. And it's also great for injury prevention when you're smashing a lot. And we've got something to help you with this in just a second. But to summarize the video, you want to have good preparation like this. Be behind the shuttle in a forehand grip, nice and loose, holding it down the racket then power through your legs, rotate your hips, torso, and then your shoulders and elbow come through after this, and you get a nice clean contact with the shawl, not slicing it, by your wrist snapping at the last moment and hitting it, obviously, in front of you. Well, that pretty much sums it up, and there's a lot of information there for you to digest. We asked you guys on our community tab what you struggle with the most on your smash, 
and the common themes were consistency, timing, the use of the wrist and forearm, and of course, power. Now, hopefully we've covered most of them in this video. It's certainly the longest one it's taken us to put together. So take your time learning it. So yeah, apart from obviously just repeating this video and practicing your technique, improving your overall strength will of course help with your smash power. And you can do this by following our badminton specific weights programs and core circuits, which are both available on our website. So we'll include a link in the description below if you want to check them out. Although studies suggest that doing a jump smash doesn't necessarily increase your power, it does increase the angle of the shot and how threatening you look. And it also looks quite cool, right? Yeah, I think so. So we're following up this video next week with a video just on the jump smash. So smash the subscribe button if you haven't smash already it. and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss out on that. And we'll see you on another video. Woo.